What's up, freaking world? Welcome back to another Stay Fresh production. My name is Justin Copeland, and on this channel, Stay Fresh Productions, we talk about everything fragrance related, any interest in that kind of content. Welcome to the right place. Hit that subscribe button, join the Fresh Squad today, and by doing so, you will increase, elevate, evolve, enhance, and improve your freshness. Your freshness being you bringing your best self in every situation, treating others with respect and understanding, carrying yourself with class and elegance. And we use fragrance as at least a starting place for that. You'll feel it, others will smell it. Today, we have a very, very exciting and highly anticipated, at least if you're asking me, video. And this is gonna be another one of my in the real world episodes here where I take a new fragrance, I have not even smelled it yet, I show you my first impression here on camera. I'm gonna give it a full wearing if it jives with me, and then I'll come back later and let you know how I feel about it. So it's a little bit more of a realistic portrayal of what it's like to experience a new fragrance, not too different from how you would do it yourself at home. This is the newest from the house of Argos, and we're gonna have a lot more information coming on this very soon, and I'll explain why later. The presentation was already great, but I'm letting you know now, I'm warning you, it's even better, it's been elevated here. And the newest from the house of Argos fragrances, we have Danae. I'm not gonna go into all the backstory and the lore behind Danae, behind this artwork, this painting, behind the artist and all that. We're gonna actually save that for an interview that I'm going to be doing with Christian Petrovich, the CEO and creator of Argos Fragrances. That will be coming up first week of December not sure when you're seeing this, but maybe it's upon us very soon. For now, I'm just gonna show you the aesthetics, gonna show you what the box and everything looks like, gonna show you what the bottle looks like, and then we're gonna talk about the scent, of course. So this is your outer box. This, this is, again, it was already great, but he's even stepped it up more. This is a brand new collection that he has introduced, and I think this is called the Artist Collection, if I'm not mistaken, where he focuses on the artwork of a particular artist. This is the Artist Series, yes, and wow. So, inside, let me close this up. Inside of that outer box, you're gonna have the classic Argos inner box, almost like a faux leather kind of wrap, but it's almost like a book. Opens with a magnetic closure. Let's look at this bottle here, look at this. Wow. So we have the bottle itself with the artwork. All this stuff painstakingly created. Again, we'll go into it more during the interview. You have all the information about the scent, about the story, the notes and everything. We're not gonna look at that just yet. I'm gonna show you this bottle. We're gonna give it a spray. Same as we saw on the outer box, we have a representation of Danae who is a very, very popular figure in art and represented in different ways by different artists. I think this is hand painted, honestly. I'm pretty sure that's the case here, every bottle. And we have the just all the regular aesthetics here, but just elevated here. I love the Argos cap here. It's actually a matte finish this time around. We do have the jewel there on the eye, which is a new touch. The inside of the plate has uh, some delineation there of the uh, the artist, of the collection this is coming from, and this juice color is incredible. Again, I don't know what this smells like. I have no idea. We're going to do my first impressions. Pull this cap off for the first time. Okay, that was pretty tough. I think he told me it would take a few times and then it actually clicks. And then it's actually going to get easier after a few times. So we'll deal with that later. We have our atomizer here and... I have a clean arm with some cat scratches on it. <laughs> the life of having a cat, uh, but we're not gonna spray right on those. I'm gonna spray here on my wrist. That beautiful pressurized atomizer puts out a very fine. Wow, I'm just letting it come to me. So just bear with me here. Okay, whoa. Okay, this is rich. This is, uh, it's very spicy. Oh my gosh, warm and spicy. I'm almost getting apple, definitely some citruses, making it a little bit bright, but I'm getting a, a warm, sweet, spicy apple vibe here. I will admit, at first spray, when I first got it in the air, when it first hit me, the first thing I thought of was Triumph of Bacchus, one of their previous fragrances. I was getting that you know, almost like spicy, warm, sweet apple, maybe even a bit of a booziness, but now that I actually get closer to it 
and it's drying a little bit. It's not quite like that. Maybe some woods in there. There's an interesting texture in here that I'm gonna have a hard time describing and it might sound unpleasant. It's almost like rubbery leather. Now that might not sound very pleasant, but it's not really the scent of that. It's more of the texture of that. It's not just straight up smooth, sweet, creamy, milky, you know, scent. There's something, again, there's a texture to it, but it's actually fading. Now that the more I smell it, it is fading. It's not something I found unpleasant. It's actually quite peculiar and very intriguing. Now, as you know, smelling a fragrance up close like this on skin or on paper, I'm not even gonna put it on paper because I think that's useless for something like this. Smelling a fragrance up close like this is like looking at a painting from this far away. I think in order to get the full experience, the, the more realistic experience, you have to take a step back, which means putting it on the body and smelling it in the air around you. Not to say that there's no value in dissecting a fragrance like this, but we have to be real. No one's gonna smell it on you like this unless you have a very intimate situation and you never get all of the notes when you spray a fragrance on and you wear it. You're not gonna get every nuance in the air. You're gonna get some things that are gonna dance around and you'll pick them up, but there's some things you won't get unless you smell up close. And we love doing this. This is a very beautiful thing to do. It's a very intimate way of experiencing our fragrances, but again, it's not realistic. So I'm gonna spray this on. I can tell it's pretty potent. It doesn't seem overwhelming, but I can tell that this has some legs to it. So let's go with one. Ooh, this thing puts out so much juice. That's incredible. Two. I'm going to put one on the inside of each collar. And one thing to always keep in mind is the more of a fragrance you spray, the more of it you smell. That might sound stupid and obvious, but it's true. It's opened up even more than it was here on my skin because I have more of it around me. Really curious about these notes. Let's take a look at the notes here. So top notes of bergamot and Sicilian lemon, heart notes of pink pepper, Gaiac wood, cedar wood, cashmere wood. Base notes of cystus, which is basically lebdanum if I'm not mistaken. Patchouli, sandalwood, and musk. It's so interesting. This is one of those fragrances that, that's so interesting. I don't, I don't feel like I'm smelling a fragrance based on what is outlined here. I'm getting a sweet warmth, which could be, you know, cashmere wood could maybe attribute to that. Maybe the cystus, there's something like rich and almost leaning fruity, but not ripe fruit though, like almost warm, like cooked, baked fruit in a way. I'm getting something bonafide sweet about this, but nothing about this is screaming like this is a sweet fragrance, at least nothing about this note breakdown. I'm just gonna read the last blurb here talking about the scent itself. I'm not gonna read the story yet. This is a central and divine fragrance. Argos Dene begins to arouse the senses, opening with bright bergamot and Sicilian lemon, seductive heart notes of spicy pink peppercorn, deep gaiac, cedar and cashmere wood transition slowly. Long lasting and carnal base notes of sweet and sticky cystis. Okay, the cystis. Spicy patchouli, mysore sandalwood, and intoxicating musk leave one enraptured in Dene's smell. Spell not smell, but there's a nice little pun for you. I'm gonna see how this develops and I'm gonna come right back. It'll be a second for you, it might be hours for me, but see you in a sec. Okay, I'm in the car. Sorry, I'm in an awkward place, it's dark. I'm trying to get some light. I'm actually about to head out to one of the universities I teach at. It's a little bit of a hike, at least 35 minutes away. I had a concert there last week. I forgot my iPad and one of my colleagues picked it up and has it in his office. So I gotta go grab it because I, I want it. I need it, technology. Netflix. Still currently wearing Danae. It's smelling wonderful. It hasn't changed a ton. I'm still getting this warm, sweet, spicy woodiness that still has a very festive feel. It makes me think of Christmas. It makes me think of warm apple pie. It makes me think of the holidays. It's actually perfect. It's pretty cold today, so it's doing well. I actually put on another spray on the back of the neck just for good measure. So rocking technically six sprays right now. Gonna hit the road. I'll see you in a sec. 
Okay, I'm pretty sure you can't see me at all now, but I got my iPad, had a long but short, but long but short drive out here. I was getting whiffs, I'm still getting whiffs of the Nate, and it was reminding me of something, and I couldn't place it, I couldn't place it, and then it kind of hit me, it's fleeting right now, but this is gonna sound weird, it almost reminds me a little bit of One Million Privé from Paco Rabanne, but I'm going to head home now and I'm going to put them side by side and make sure of that. I just I was reminded of the feeling more than anything, but even a bit of the scent profile, perhaps as I ex uh, explained it earlier, could be congruent. But we're going to see nonetheless smelling beautiful, smelling of great quality, has great integrity to the scent. It's not falling apart or anything like that. It smells both refined and kind of alluring. I think it's pretty perfectly unisex, but the intense woods and spices, some people might say is a little masculine, but nonetheless, it's a personality that has presence, that has dignity, but there's an inviting nature to it. There's something even a little sexy about this stuff. I'm really loving it. I'll be back with more in a bit. See y'all. Okay, we are back. Welcome back home. Uh, it's been several hours. I still have Danae on, smells wonderful. Still warm, sweet. I'm still surprised how cystus can contribute quite a significant amount of sweetness. Now I have yet to smell cystus labdenum on its own, so maybe if I did that, I would not be so surprised. But by this note breakdown, you wouldn't think this would have quite as much richness and depth as it has. Now, in a previous segment, I had mentioned this very fleeting resemblance to something like Paco Rabanne 1 million Privé. And I did spray them side by side on paper. This thing doesn't even hold a candle to Binet. Now, when I first smelled it, I was like, okay, I could kind of see them in the same realm, but they are in no way sharing any true DNA, to be honest. I have Danae here on paper, still going super strong. Just disregard what I said. This isn't a league of its own for sure. It's not what I was expecting, especially looking at the note breakdown. I was expecting something a little bit fresher, almost like a fresh, spicy, woody fragrance. It's not really fresh. I would not categorize this as a fresh scent. I would not wear this in the summertime. If I was going to wear it in the spring, it has to be on a cooler day or night. And this is a nighttime scent to me. This screams fall and winter. Performance has been good so far. I don't remember exactly when I filmed that first segment. It was probably at this point, maybe four hours ago for me. And I'm still smelling and I'm still getting wafts around me. It's still creating a nice bubble. I have a feeling it's going to just continue to stay on the skin for at least another five hours. So those are my first impressions, at least so far on Danae from Argos. More to come on this. They have a couple of other new fragrances in this collection that are not yet released that I think we'll see perhaps later on, maybe next year. But for now, this is a great introduction into this new collection here. Use the code FRESH10 to get you a discount on whatever the heck you wanna purchase from Argos whether it's any of the original releases, whether it's this new one here, if you want to get a sample pack to try a bunch of them again, they might throw this in the sample pack. They might start a new one. I'm not really sure what's going to happen with that, but I do recommend checking this out, especially for the fall and winter. This is beautiful stuff. Is it my favorite? Not sure yet. I need to spend more time with it. The amount of time I've spent with this pales, barely pales in comparison to the time I've spent with the others. So I need some more time to truly assess, but right now I really dig it. So once again, stay tuned for that live stream that Christian and I will be doing. I'm going to check my calendar here to figure out the day we set. I think we said we're going to do it on December the 7th at 11 a.m. Pacific right here on YouTube. I will be live with Christian Petrovich from Argos to talk all about this new fragrance, this new collection, his inspiration, the fragrances that have not yet been released. If he's at liberty to say anything, you don't want to miss that at all. We're going to get all the backstory behind Danae from the mouth of the creator. So recommend checking that out. I will be in touch before that happens, just to remind you. But in the meantime, thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.